Hey everyone, it's Christian and today we'll check out the new version of the open source password manager Passbolt. I've already reviewed Passbolt here some time ago on my channel and I absolutely love its unique features like the extremely secure architecture or that you can completely self-host it for maximum privacy. And what is also really nice about it, you can easily share passwords with other team members in Passbolt. Probably one of these features that stands out the most, super interesting for enterprise companies and maybe tech support teams. Now the new version 5.3 of Passbolt was just released and it is packed with some exciting new features such as the encrypted metadata that enhances the security even more and it has many more options to customize your credentials like adding new icons and colors. It now has custom fields and multiple URIs so I thought it might be a great chance to review it again. If you're looking for a secure privacy focused password manager that you can easily set up in your home lab or maybe company environment this might be super interesting for you. So let's get started and a big thanks goes out to Passport for sponsoring this video. All right, guys, so first of all, if you want to have a full installation tutorial on the free community edition of Passport, then please check out my first video about it, because there I'm teaching you how to simply install this Passport manager in your own self-hosted environment using a simple Docker Compose deployment. Of course, I've also updated the templates on my Boilerplate's GitHub repository for it. And if you want to update your existing Passport installation to the latest version 5.3 that we are reviewing in this video, then, well, just change the docker image tag to the latest version, restart your container and then you will be ready to go. But of course, if you prefer a different installation method, feel free to check out some guides on their official website. There you can learn how to install this on Kubernetes, any Linux distribution or even use it in the cloud. And of course, you can also upgrade to the business and enterprise plans, which by the way works both on cloud and your self-hosted environments to even further enhance the feature set. But again, in this video, we'll just focus on the free community edition of Passport that I have deployed in my home lab as well. So let's log into my self-hosted Passport instance to check out the latest features that were added. By the way, I still have to switch to the Chrome browser because the Safari browser extension for Passport is unfortunately not ready yet. But I've already spoken to the team at Passport about this problem, so it's definitely coming soon. And of course, they might add some other cool features as well, like passkey support is coming later this year along with more content types, so I'm really excited about this. All right, so once you upgraded your Passport instance from an older version 4 to the new version 5, the first thing that I would strongly recommend you to do after upgrading is to go to the organization settings and enable the new features to use the encrypted metadata. And also, I think it's a good idea to switch the default metadata types when you're creating new credentials because only this will unlock some of the new features that I'm showing you today. And it also increases the security and privacy for all your stored credentials that you migrate to the new encrypted metadata type. And just to give you a little more background on what actually is encrypted metadata and what that means. So in the version 4 of Passport, all the secrets such as passwords, descriptions or TOTPs were already protected with a robust end-to-end -end encryption. But other sensitive metadata, like the resource names or the URIs, were still accessible by the server where Passport is running. And while this may have been sufficient for many use cases, it certainly raised some concerns by people that were seeking a stronger privacy model, especially in cloud environments where the Passport instance is not self-hosted. This was a major issue the team wanted to address. The version 5 of Passport introduced a new hybrid encryption model that uses client-side decryption. By the way, in this video, we'll not dive into all the technical details. If you're interested, you'll find a great blog post that was created by the Passport team about their new security architecture for encrypted metadata. And it even explains some of the decisions and thinking process behind it. I absolutely love this. Of course, I'll put you a link to this blog post in the description so you can check it out. But I think it's worth saying that this approach by Passport is 
pretty unique because password managers usually don't encrypt everything by default because it's making things like searching or account recovery or even system auditing much harder to do. That's why I'm really honoring the Passport's approach to focus even more on the needs of enterprise organizations and professional teams and provide a good balance between security and usability. I think for everybody who is cautious about security and wants a password manager that is super transparent with how it's storing and processing credentials, then Passport is definitely a nice option. However, if you still want to use the legacy metadata type in Passport for whatever reason, you can still do this. So when you're activating this new encrypted metadata in Passport, all the existing credentials are still stored in the legacy format. So that's why I said you first have to migrate them. And you can very specifically decide for each credential if you want to update it to the new metadata type or maybe if you just want to migrate all of your existing credentials or only shared credentials. Passbolt gives you complete control of everything and it is even fully backwards compatible with existing API automations or implementations by using the legacy metadata type. So that's it about the new secure architecture. I think this is really a great improvement just to show you what that looks on my system. So when I'm opening a credential that is still in the legacy format, Passbolt will show a small upgrade button at the bottom. So when you click on that, you immediately see all the new functions and features of the encrypted metadata type that now appear in the menu. For example, the new appearance function. So this allows you to change the color and the icon of your credentials and I really like this because now it means you can better differentiate between the different types of credentials in a larger database. Before your only way to separate out things was using folders, which you still can use, but I just like to have a little more options for coloring and icons. And one thing I still would like to see though is the ability to upload custom icons, yeah, or maybe that Passport automatically downloads the fav icons from the URIs. Uh, but yeah, that's it about icons and colors. I also really like that you can now add multiple URIs. So before we only were able to add one URI per credential, and this is really great because you often have multiple interfaces and portals for the same credentials. Just think about Microsoft, where you have your regular Microsoft account website, but also OneDrive, Azure, Office 365, and whatnot. So adding multiple URIs makes it just easier to use your credentials in these scenarios because you then automatically have autofill in for all these different addresses and portals. They also added a new description field, which honestly, I'm not really sure why you would need this. So because the legacy metadata type already had a node field, but yeah, maybe there is a technical reason for it. Uh, but yeah, despite all these uh, customizations and the security and quality of life improvements, for me personally, the most interesting feature they just added in the version 5.3. So this is really brand new. This is the support for custom fields. And this is absolutely amazing because now we are not just limited to the username, password and node fields. Now we can add as many key value pairs as we want for each credential. And this is actually solving a big problem for me that I had with Passport because I often uh, want to store additional information for my credentials like API keys, for example, or data database passwords. For example, here you can see I'm storing the credentials for my Cloudflare account. When I want to log into the dashboard, I need username and password. But of course, I've also created many API tokens and secrets that I need for connecting my Terraform automations or for authenticating the DNS challenges when I'm issuing TLS certificates. In the past, I always had to create separate objects for these tokens and use the password fields. So now I have just one credential object and I can add as many custom fields as I want to store this type of information. This is really making things a lot easier for me. So yeah, that's why I absolutely love the latest version 5.3 of Passport. I'm really super excited about this password manager because it really gets better and better with every new update. To be perfect, there are just two more features that I'm desperately waiting for, which I already said in the beginning of this video, I just need the Safari browser extension. So please, Passport team, continue working on it. I need it. And I also want to see the new content types like pass keys or maybe SSH keys, because this is something that already many other password managers just can do. And I think this will make Passport even more interesting for any home lab or tech people like us. 
But yeah, this is just my personal opinion, of course. Uh, you might have a totally different view on this, so please tell me, what do you think about the latest version of Passport? Have you ever thought about the security architecture of password managers and how important is self-hosting to you and how they are processing credentials? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys. A big thanks goes out to all the supporters on my YouTube channel. You guys are so amazing. And of course, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.